channel www.youtube.com forward slash Jason Matthew Glass you can find that link in my bio I did a couple videos about military psychological operations one in particular in which I did an audit of a document known as task force sheepdog which although the author of that document had been redacted in the public version of the document I was able to track down and prove a continuance of the evidence of who the author was. And the author was uh, Special Forces Military Psychological Operations Officer, Sergeant Robert Horton. And I have a copy of it right here on my phone. You can find it online. Anyways, I did a whole audit of that over on my YouTube channel, one of my recent Coral Blade Grotto broadcasts. So go ahead and check that out if you want to. The reason why I'm bringing it up here on TikTok is because it's my guess that TikTok is 100% a military psychological operations. It's a PSYOP. Just like the very grammar that I teach has connections with PSYOPs. All grammar and language are psyops, literally in psychological operations, because they take place in your mind. Now, someone can have an idea, and it may be pure from the ground up. But if it takes root, and other people join in, and they see that it's pure, and it's good, and it's going to benefit mankind... You can bet your ass that the military psychological operations contingent is going to infiltrate that, corrupt it, poison it, divide it, and modify it. Happens all the time with everything. So that's what I always say about the grammar. <clears throat> Correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar is a pure technology. What you do with it is up to you. The tech is pure. It cannot be corrupted. If you see a grammar that has been corrupted, it is not correct sentence structure. Correct sentence structure is pure. That is why so few people will ever learn it or use it. Because how do you know it's pure if you don't know how to certify a fact for yourself? Anyways, my whole point in coming on to TikTok to do this was to read to you the objective of the military PSYOP capabilities. I'm going to read it to you. This is from, this is the actual capability brief from a military Psychological Operations Officer. Psychological Operations Warfare, in parentheses, so warfare to them is synonymous with operations, is the tip of the spear in the highest echelon of military warfare in the world whose missions objectives are to conduct, amongst many other things, planned operations, planned warfare, to convey selected information and indicators to a specific demographic or target audience. So PSYOPs are the highest echelon of military warfare. The most important. So they want to convey selected information and indicators to a specific demographic or target audience in order to infiltrate to change 
persuade and or influence the emotions, motives, objective reasoning, and ultimately the personal behavior of any target audience, foreign or otherwise, on a planetary scale in an, or, in an effort to control every town, city, state, government, organization, group, or individual, from their religious groups to their corporations, all the way down to their clubs and or teams in an entire country, nation, or region of the hemisphere of this planet, in association and cooperation with the U.S. State Department, host nation, and commander-in-chief's overall objectives. Did you hear what I just read to you? People like to think, oh, PSYOPs, it has to do with those people over there. Our government and military would never do that to us. If you believe that, I have some oceanfront beach property to sell you in Idaho. It's everywhere. It's TikTok, Facebook, all social media. Everything you read, everything you see. All the LGBT, elemental P, Skittles movement, Black Lives Matter, the Trump trainers, the hard right, the hard left, the neo-Nazis, the commies, all of it is part of military psychological operations warfare. And it's all in an effort to control you and me. But there's a choice, friends and neighbors. There's a choice. Once you cognize this knowledge, once you comprehend it, you digest it, you accept it, that, hey, maybe I've been taken advantage of here. Maybe this whole where we go, one we go, all movement. Maybe this whole Jesus is our savior movement. Maybe this whole Asalaamu uh, Alaikum, all this whatever. Maybe it's all a psyop to control our minds, to influence our behavior and our thinking. Once you realize that, then you can just clean the slate and start thinking for yourself. Start taking accountability for yourself. Start from scratch. Clean the slate. The only one that can save you is you. It's like you, you see that another PSYOP would be like Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, which is retarded. I mean, I'm sorry, I don't mean to offend anybody with that word. It's ridiculous because alcohol is a drug. Why are they separating alcohol from drugs when alcohol is a drug? It's a PSYOP. And then, and then in the 12 Steps, they tell you, I don't know which step it is, but they tell you, you have to admit that a higher power exists, and then you have to put your sobriety or whatever, your life in the hands of this higher power and just trust that it's all going to work out. And you got to keep coming back and keep going to these meetings, and it's all a control mechanism. I hate to say it, folks, drug addiction is a choice. You have a choice. You do. And you have a choice to whether you want to be a Democrat or Republican. You have a choice as to whether you want to follow monotheism. You have a choice as to whether you want to be an is, um, a Muslim or a Christian, which are actually subsets of Judaism. It all comes from the Jews, the Judaism, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, which in and of itself is a psyop. Think about it. I guess the point I'm making with this, uh, this little rant is that once you realize this, there is a way, there is a tool, there's an instrument that you can use to achieve autonomy. Because the one thing, the most important thing, the highest echelon known to us of communication is grammar. When you feel something, when you spill hot coffee on your arm and you say, ow, that hurts, words pop into your head. Hot, ouch, coffee, burn. These words pop into your head. Everything 
is transformed into words in your head. A lot of times, you know, it seems like you can't control those words. Well, guess what? If you're not in charge of those words that come in and out of your head, someone else is. And whether you know it or not, you could be being manipulated. Your emotions, just like I just read in the PSYOPs uh, capability briefing, your emotions, everything, your behavior, being controlled by someone else who's controlling the words that come in and out of your head. But you can become a steward of your grammar and you can direct what words come in and out of your head and be aware of what they mean. I'm not going to cap. It takes a lot of hard work. A lot of hard work, a lot of commitment. Very few people possess the tenacity to do it. A lot of people are like that one fellow in the Matrix who uh, betrays Neo and everybody. Um... Same guy that played Ralphie on The Sopranos. I can't remember his name. He was also in uh, Eddie and the Cruisers. He played the manager or something. That guy in The Matrix. He betrays Neo and Morpheus and everybody because he says he just wants to sit down and enjoy his steak. He enjoys The Matrix. He doesn't want to do the hard work. He just wants to be comfortable. And that's cool, you know. That's why so few people will learn this. Because it does take a lot of hard work to learn it. But if you do want to learn it, a great introduction would be to go to my YouTube channel, www.youtube.com forward slash Jason Matthew Glass. You can find a link to that in my bio. And start studying the almost 900 videos over there. Free. Which I've spent thousands of hours creating since 2018. Or if you want to fast track your learning, if you really, really, really want to get down to brass tacks, you want the bullet to hit the bone, contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a workshop. That link is also in my bio. But if you're going to contact me, please use your full name, full correct name to the best of your knowledge. You know my full correct name. I just ask the same consideration of you. Because I will not contract with anyone who does not stand behind their name, who does not credential themselves, who does not take authority over their words. It's not an easy road. It's definitely a hard road. But if you think you got what it takes, go ahead and contact me. Anyways. The vast scope of psychological operations from the military is, wow, it's so all-encompassing. From what you read, what you watch, what you eat, what you think, the news, the media, everything has been influenced in some way by military psyops. If you, if you are a part of a group or you feel like you're a part of a community that is doing something good for the community or society or where you think you're doing great works and things like that, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, you've been infiltrated. You're being manipulated. Groups are especially susceptible to this. And many times the people the what we will call Judases in these groups don't even know that they're Judases. And also a lot of times the excuses that uh, agents or officers of these operations, they rationalize what they do because they feel it's for the betterment of overall society. That's what they're told. It's kind of like the mentality, and this is going to be brutal, but this is kind of like the mentality of, because it is war to them, it's warfare. It's the mentality of when one army, uh, uh, an invading army invades another country and they kill all the men, women, and children. And they say, why are you killing children? It's like, well, they're just going to grow up to be our enemy anyways, so you might as well kill them now. It's that type of 
attitude. Keep in mind, folks, there's one cosmological uh, principle, only one, and to put it in a negative condition of state, it means do no harm. If you find yourself violating that rule, you might be part of the problem. Now, the three principles that I teach from correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, the balance of the honor and the grace, the position of peace and neutrality, and the maintenance of rule one, rule equal. Now, the maintenance of rule one, rule equal are what we would simplify as judges mechanics. Get the whole story, know the whole story, provide a geometric level playing field of contract for those that wish to step up upon it. Do not try to take some sort of advantage if you are trying to make a fair contract. If you're not trying to make a fair contract, well then you're not participating with rule one rule equal. You're violating it. And that's what the fiction system does always have an advantage. Why? Because they have the bigger guns and clubs and they can come in and smash you anytime they want to. That's why we have to be smarter and we have to, we have to be beholden to higher principles. Let's put it that way. Because what goes around certainly does come around. Now, the balance of the honor and the grace, what I mean by that is you must have a balance. Rule one, rule equal between honor and grace. Honor meaning if you make a contract, you perform on it. The most basic example of that would be if you and I agree to meet at 10 o'clock in the morning down at the 7-Eleven. That's our contract. We're going to meet at 10 o'clock down at the 7-Eleven. And I'm there at 10 o'clock. And then I get a phone call at 10 o'clock from you. And you say, hey, man, I'm coming in on that rum line, man. I'm, I'm late. Uh, the car wouldn't start. I'm going to be there at quarter after 10. If I was only strictly honorable, I'd get mad. I'd be upset. I'd be like, you should have been here on time. And then all sorts of bad things might happen. Or I can perform with the balance of the honor and the grace because I know shit happens. And I could say, that's okay, man. I'll wait here for you. That's balancing out the honor with grace. You have grace. You give people a little bit of slack. Because you see, honor without grace is hell. And when you have grace without honor, then people take advantage of you. So you got to have a balance of that. And a position of peace and neutrality means that you come into any situation peacefully. You're not at war. You're not a warrior. Because if you say you're a warrior, then you're going to get war. Then you're pro-war. But if you come in right off the bat with the position of peace and neutrality, that means that you're peaceful. Your volition is not to fight. And neutrality, which means you're unbiased. You're not taking sides. You're not there to mess anybody's day up. You're there for a specific purpose known to you. And you're not there to hurt anybody else or go after anybody else. Now, when other contract parties violate the position of peace and neutrality, then the position of peace and neutrality is now off the table. Do you see what I'm saying? Then you no longer have to be peaceful. Then you no longer have to be neutral because now you might be in a fight for your life, so you do what you have to do. But before all that, you come in initially with the position of peace and neutrality. 
And I don't mean you come in and say you're peaceful and you're all decked out in Kevlar and automatic rifles and whatever. I'm not saying that because if you come in like that and say you're peaceful, well, you certainly don't look peaceful, bro. No, it has to be genuine in order for it to work. So I'll just wrap this up by saying what I initially came on here to say, and that's if you want to learn about military psychological operations, go on over my YouTube channel and check out the video titled Coral Blade Grotto Broadcast, a reaction to Task Force Sheepdog. And I audit a document written by a Special Forces Psychological Operations Officer, Sergeant Robert Horton, which again, he redacted his name in the document, but in the video you'll see that I actually provide a continuance of the evidence that we know who the author is. It wasn't very hard to figure it out, but I provide a continuance of the evidence for that. So, thank you for watching. Oh God, oh God. Thank you.